Alright guys, welcome to our preview and predictions for WWE Fastlane, which takes place this Sunday live on the WWE Network. Elle, how are you doing? Are you excited for Fastlane? Oh yeah, I'm like booming with excitement. Not. <laughs> you just can't contain it, can you? Oh no, I'm like super duper excited. <laughs> it, it's one of them ones where the match card, I don't think it's one that I'm really looking forward to. It's a bit mixed. I think there's some good matches on there. There's some that might stand out and maybe steal the show, but... I don't know, a lot of it, either I'm not too interested or it's a bit too predictable. Yeah, I definitely agree. It kind of feels like a glorified run. That's like the best way I can describe it. It does a little bit. It's kind of like I'm going into this thinking this is just to like tide us over at WrestleMania. So I'm not really too fussed what happens. It's just getting to the granddaddy of them all next month at WrestleMania. Yeah, I, I definitely think we're going to get a good few matches, but... You can tell they've been kind of lost of what to do because coming out of Royal Rumble, we had like these feuds that we thought we were going to get, and for most of the things, we've hardly got any of them. So it's kind of, I think that's the problem like, with Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. They kind of are a bit far apart, and it's that road in between them that can sometimes feel a bit strange. It is. I, I think that's probably what we've got this kind of year. It, it's with the Royal Rumble as well being messed up and not having like a Royal Rumble winner going to WrestleMania instead of having mm -hmm. like Triple H with the championship. It's kind of messed it up, so it just feels a little bit weird. But um, before we get to Fastlane, let's go back to the Royal Rumble. Let's jump back in time. We've got a big congratulations for quite a lot of people this month. We've got 14 people that got a perfect score of 5 out of 5 correct results on predictions. So congratulations to Cacpri. Daniel Diaz, APAC95, AM Cool Guy, Danik123, I Am Galaxy, Kyle Ren22, NWO Squirly Man, The Wild One, Insane Crazy Guy, XB1, RKO PS4, C Nation Hardy, Z Man 4424, and last but certainly not least, a certain Miss Revolution. Bloody, did I get them all right? You, you got a perfect 5 out of 5. Although, to be fair, predicting Triple H, you did like pretty much name everybody under I, I the authority. The, yeah, I said the authority, so that like kind of stands, but like, I didn't even realise I'd got them all right. <laughs> you did, you got a perfect score, so congratulations to you and all them other people. I, I, was, I was surprised, there was so many people actually, actually got it right, I can't remember, there's so many people get that, and being the Royal Rumble, I thought it'd be quite hard to predict. I will say that, that a lot of the times we do say like, the pay per views feel predictable, but with the Royal Rumble, it didn't feel too predictable yet, even though I got them right and I didn't know. It was still a great pay per view, and I think a lot of them could have gone easily anywhere, and it, it was a really good pay per view. Probably one of the best ones we've had in like a long time. Yeah, it was an awesome pay per view. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm glad you said it could go anywhere, because I didn't do too well. I, I got two, two out of five. You sound shocked. What do you mean? I, I was shocked. I couldn't believe I got two. I, well, I, I, I did promise like it's a new year and like I'm going to just like sail through and beat everyone else. Well, you've you've definitely got off to the best start. <laughs> going to be top of the leaderboard. So that, that was last month. That is the Royal Rumble, but it's a new month. It is time for Fastlane. So guys, if you want to get involved and submit your predictions, you can head over at smacktalks.org forward slash predictions and then I'll post the results next week. So let's move on to fast lane predictions. We're going to kick things off with a six-man tag team match. That sees Ryback, Big Show, and Kane taking on the Wyatt family. And following the recent attacks, the Wyatt family have took out the Big Show, they took out Kane, took out Ryback, but Kane has actually come back this week, made the save. It was pretty awkward. He come up through the ring, and he kind of got stuck there. He couldn't get out. <laughs> You had to have the Wyatt family actually lift him out so you could choke slam them, which I thought was really awkward and really weird. But I guess they got the upper hand this week, so I don't know, maybe the Wyatts could be picking up the loss. How do you see it going? I, I really hope the Wyatts join. I, I think they're kind of like on a good roll, especially with Strowman and things. And I think like the team of Ryback, Big Sean, Ken, to, to be fairly honest, I'd happily release all three of them. I, I think they've done pretty much all they can. I don't think they can actually bring an awful lot to WWE anymore. Fair enough, you could probably say Ryback, but the other two, I think it's like it's been their time, and I, I think I think the match is there to have like a loss to the White family. I think the Whites need to go on with this momentum to WrestleMania, and I think stopping that's only going to hurt them even more than the past few months. See, I'm I'm, I'm kind of going the other way because I see this as being you know one of their matches where they put the White family in them just so they're on the card. Because I'm pretty much certain they're going to interfere in the main event. 
And I think if they pick up a loss here, it might put people off the idea they'll be here later in the night. But what I don't get is Michael Cole is calling these guys the Titans of WWE, the Big Show, Kane and Ryback. Now, I don't know if Ryback's really a Titan, so maybe he's confusing him with Goldberg considering he's like latest attire. But it just seems a bit strange in like the match itself, it seems quite thrown together. So I don't think there's really much on the line here anyway. I I'm probably going to go with the Titans to win this. <laughs> the only thing tight in that group's Ryback shots absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it looks so stupid and like you said, happily you release all three of them and <laughs> it it kind of feels like a match that should probably be on the pre-show. Well, I thought this would be the pre-show match, but when I was just checking, apparently the United States Championship with Kalisto, the two out of three falls match, that's going to be on the pre-show. So that really surprised us. <laughs> I think I think I wouldn't mind like, your idea of the whites in it feeling later on, but I think they should dominate this match and then dominate again later on. I think it'd only make them look strong. And then I think WWE have kind of done that wrong with the whites in the past. They'll lose one match and yet... Yeah, like, I, I think, was it Survivor Series that came and kidnapped Undertaker and it was a bit like, well then why did you need to lose that match if you can do that? It was, it's kind of silly and I, I think it kind of damages them. Yeah, when they kidnapped Undertaker and then they just <laughs> let him go. What was the point? <laughs> yeah, it's just the wide family book going all over. I, I think I kind of agree with you on this one. I definitely think they'll be in the main event somehow to attack Lesnar. So, like you say, if they win this and it puts them on a good standing, I think that makes more sense. If they get beat off Ryback, Big Show and Kane, and then somehow they've come back and they've took out Brock Lesnar, that, that doesn't really make too much sense. So I, I'm going to go, like you said there, I'm going to go White Family on this first one. Yeah, I'd, I definitely agree. And if you want to get a score higher than two, you should probably keep up the trend. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll probably just let you go first this month and I can copy you, just, just to get some points on the board. So we'll go the same way on this one. We're going to go with the Wyatt family. Uh, that's the first match out of the way. But next up, we'll have the first of two Divas matches. We've got a tag team match. So we've got Becky Lynch teaming up with Sasha Banks in an unlikely pairing to take on some of your favourites, Naomi and Tamina, the remains of Team Bad. How do you see this one? <laughs> I'm still like, overly depressed about that whole entire situation. I think it's total waste. And I think... WWE are like really stupid for breaking them up. I, I get why they've done it because it's going to lead in at WrestleMania with Sasha Banks, but it's like a tough one because I think Naomi and Tamina, they should probably look strong, kind of like what I'm saying with the Wyatts, but at the same time, if Becky and uh, Sasha are going to go into WrestleMania, they need to win it. It's kind of like a sticky situation. It is. It, it's a weird one. Like, I was a big fan of Team BD, but at the same time, I do want to see Sasha on her own. It's it's like, I don't know, could they coexist? Could they still be there as backup? Maybe you have her back? See, I, I think that's the thing. Like, they have this awful thing. It was like what they did with the Whites last year. Instead of like letting one of them kind of go off on their own, but still having the team, they decide to break them up. And I think having Naomi and Tamina coach um, Sasha, even though she didn't need coaching, but just having her there in the background, I think that I'd only aid her and for some reason they've just let her go off on her own. Yeah, it's a great comparison that you bring up the Wyatt family because I totally forgot that was the reason that actually broke them up. Mm -hmm. So it does make sense. I guess in a way I'm kind of glad that this has been done so quick because the PCB stuff, that seemed to actually be drawn out for absolutely ages. So I'm kind of glad in a way, but at the same time I liked team bad so it's quite disappointing um as, in regards to the match itself though i think who's gonna win it it's got to be becky lynch and sasha because i think then it maybe sets them up as being the number one contenders and they can maybe fight it out between themselves hopefully set up a triple threat match for wrestlemania yeah i definitely think that's the way it's going i kind of wouldn't mind if it wasn't a necessarily clean finish i think i'd like maybe a quick roll up or something against team bad so they don't look too bad and I, I keep saying it on Twitter and a lot of people disagree, but I'd kind of like Sasha to turn on Becky after the match and reunite with us. And it's all been like a bit of mind games, like they did with the Le Cool and things, because then you've still got the Sasha versus Becky versus Charlotte if Charlotte wins. And you've still got Team BID, but I don't know. I, I think we're possibly just going to get those two clean and then brawl probably on the Raw after. Yeah, I, I can totally see that. I think by Raw, I think these two are going to be going at it anyway. It would be cool if this is kind of, you know, all a ploy 
And it does, mm. even if it ends up at WrestleMania and we do get like a one-on-one or a triple threat with Sasha and Team BD come down, down to ringside, you think they're going to go after Sasha, but they actually turn on Charlotte or someone else and help her win it. I think that would be quite cool to see. Yeah, I think it'd be something different as well because it's strange because they were probably the most cohesive unit, even though the Bellas, the sisters and things, I think they worked the best out of all of the teams. Yeah, so maybe that unity is still there. <laughs> Can it see it? Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be quite cool. I actually like to see that. So, we're we both going to go Becky and Sasha on this one. Yeah, I think it's the most probable one. Cool. Well, that's two matches we we'll agree on. Next match, like I said, this one it seems to be taking place on the pre-show, which does surprise us. It's a two out of three falls match for the United States Championship, and that is Kalisto defending against Alberto Del Rio. To be honest, I've kind of lost a little bit of interest <laughs> in this one. I, I was like. I was huge on Kalisto when he initially won it, and then when he dropped it back to Del Rio, that took away a lot of the momentum. And then when he won it straight back at the Royal Rumble, it was like it was all moving a bit too quick, and I would have kind of preferred things to just get slowed down a little bit. But now we've kind of had all these matches between the two of them, and it's like I'm ready for Kalisto to move on to facing someone else and get like something else going. I'm so sick of seeing Del Rio in like the same match. But now we've also got sort of the conundrum of Sin Cara being back. And there's a lot of people that's saying, you know, maybe Sin Cara is going to actually cost Kalisto here. Um, and these two are going to feud with each other. But that then means like passing the title back to Del Rio. And I really don't want to see that. So I think the way I see this one going is Kalisto picking up the win. But maybe a feud between Sin Cara in the future. I don't think they're going to break up the Lucha Dragons just yet. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like you said, um, I know like a lot of us were like really high on it, and it's something like I said: if they do keep passing the title backwards and forwards, eventually we're going to get bored of it, and it's exactly what's happened. They changed the titles too fast. Then we had like the whole League of Nations getting involved. Now Sin Cara is back, and it's kind of got too many uh, too many elements. I think they've thought about it a little bit too much, crammed it all into one. And now everyone's like a little bored of it. I don't think police does getting that time to shine like he was when he originally won it. I think I think it's kind of damaged him a little bit and now like you say, like everyone's predicting that Sin Cara is gonna turn on him and I don't I don't think they should. I think I think they're another team that are great together and I wouldn't want to ruin it just yet. Well I'm kind of mixed on it because I think they are a great team. But at the same time, like I say, I want Kalisto to move on to someone else because I think mm -hmm. it, it helps him out um, if he's taking on different people. And it's not just the same person that he's beaten. And I think when you've got Sin Cara and they're both really two high-flying, fast-paced superstars, that could actually lead to some amazing matches. I think they'll be more cruiserweight-like. So I would love to see those two kind of feuding with each other. But at the same time, I'm kind of mixed because I like Lucha Dragons as a tag team. It's just one of them ones where... You know, the injury come round, Kalisto's been put in this single spotlight and he's done so well. And it's like, well, he's on the road to become the next Rey Mysterio. Do you really want to stop that? Yeah, like, it's like a really strange one. It's like, do you stop it in its tracks before it's run its course or do you kind of like diverge and see what happens? I, I think equally both routes will probably be good, but I think for me, I want them to stay together for a little bit longer and then probably like post WrestleMania have them feud. Yeah, I, th I think that's probably a good plan. Um, just keep them together for a little bit longer. Keep them with the Continental Championship. I don't think he has to drop it. So I I'm going to go Kalisto on this one. Um, two out of three falls. I think he'll probably win it two falls to one. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be like clean cut. I don't think he's going to get a like concise winner. I think Del Rio is definitely going to go for it. And it'll probably be a really good match, but because we've seen it a few times now. It, it's kind of like the Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens thing. We've seen it so many times that it's almost too like. It, it is. That, that is the problem. When you see the match over and over again, it does take away from it. So are we in agreement on this one as well? Three for yeah. three? Yeah, I really don't want Del Rey over the title again. Cool. So we're going Kalisto on this one. You just mentioned this seen it again and again the next match you'll have on the line it is the Intercontinental Championship it is Kevin Owens who's only just won it he picked it up on Raw and he's now defending against Dolph Ziggler the man's actually defeated him twice in the last two weeks so could this be win number three for Dolph Ziggler or is it going to be third time lucky for Kevin Owens how would you see this one playing out I'm really like torn because part of me is thinking surely Kevin Owens won't lose 
because he's only just got it back. But at the same time, how many times is that like title being passed around? It went from Kevin Owens to Dean Ambrose, who basically did absolutely nothing with the title. Now it's come back because of a fatal five where whatever that's supposed to be. <laughs> and now it looks like you probably could go to Dolph Ziggler. It's it's like really annoying because like at some stage I can't remember who it was, but we kind of we were building like a really strong intercontinental reign and things, and now it's kind of gone hot potato, and like nearly everyone's getting it recently. And I kind of think you need someone like a Cody Rhodes or something to bring it back to like how great it was. I, I think it's one of them ones where it's a problematic title because it's pretty much the same title as the US title, just a different name. It's kind of that same. Uh, prestige it's the kind of mid card so i always say it's awkward having two titles the same because one mm. gets pushed and the other one doesn't so it's a strange one we, we've we just said you know about the um, other title in the u.s championship getting passed between Callisto and alberto del rio i think that takes away from it and i think if Kevin Owens picks it up on Raw and he now drops it to Ziggler. I think that's kind of taken away from this one. So I think Owens is probably going to hang on to this one. If if it did drop to Ziggler, I don't think it really does too much for him because he's had so many title reigns like this and they never go anywhere. He never gets sort of mm. elevated after it. It's It always just seems a bit of a waste, like they could give it to someone else. Yeah, I think I think as well, like if you if he's gonna win it, why didn't he just win it on Raw? It, it kind of seems stupid, and not only does it hurt Dolph, but it hurts Kevin Owens, and it kind of hurts the belt itself. It, I don't think it does anyone favors. And if that was kind of gonna happen, why couldn't the title have gone to somebody else on Raw? It, it's like a strange one because we had this feud anyway without the title, and everyone was bored of it. Throwing the title isn't gonna make it any more interesting. I think we all have a theory who's gonna win and things, but. I'm still not that interested. Yeah, I, I think it's probably going to be a case of Kevin Owens wins this. I mean, one thing that I'm kind of holding out hope for is if Owens does win this, then they can maybe pick up where we thought they were going to go last month at the Royal Rumble when Owens eliminated AJ Styles. So I kind of thought when that happened, we we're going to get a program between the two. And I think going forward, once Sigler's out of the way, he'll, he should be moving on to someone else for WrestleMania. And I think AJ Styles would be the perfect person to kind of fit into that slot. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think Kevin Owens is one of the victims of having that long period between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania because they've clearly haven't had a clue what to do with him. And then it's kind of been a waiting game because we know where it's going to go. And I think if he is going to have the title, it'll be a perfect opportunity to have him versus AJ Styles for WrestleMania. I think it'd be a great way to kind of like bring AJ Styles back into the ranks because I think for me, I don't think he's done a great deal with this Chris Jericho. I think it's it's kind of hurt him a little for me. Like, I, I know of AJ Styles. I've watched him in TNA, bits online and things, but mm. I don't think he's made his mark in WWE yet, and I think it probably won't be until he moves on to this feud with Kevin Owens. Yeah, I, I totally agree on that. I guess we can kind of transition on to the Jericho and Styles because that is the next match on the card. Um, I think we're both going Kevin Owens because we'd like to see him keep the title and move on AJ Styles. Um, the way that things are going with Styles, it's, it's kind of a weird one. Because I thought the way that he was booked at the Royal Rumble, he, he was booked quite powerful. And mm. then it got around to Raw, and I don't know, ever since then, it's it's been a bit weird. Because they've done a good job of putting him over and telling you who he is, for the fans that don't know who he is. But I think for everyone else that's already a fan of AJ and have watched him for so many years, it feels a bit lacklustre. And I get that they're just kind of developing that um, sort of connection with like the audience that don't know who he is. And I, I think between Jericho and The Miz, who he's been working with, I think The Miz has done a better <laughs> job of putting him over. And I, I really like The Miz, even in the ring. I think he's someone that's really underrated. And the match that he had with Styles was actually really good. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I was going to say myself, I think the one person to come out of AJ Styles turning up is being The Miz. And he's kind of got to go back to that character that I know a lot of people didn't like him when he was like main eventing WrestleMania he was seen about I think The Miz is one of those people who's got amazing charisma and I think if you let him run on the microphone he can do wonders and I think having him have his spat with AJ Styles and Jericho and things, I think it's been brilliant. I don't think AJ Styles has looked amazing by any means but I think The Miz has brought out a lot that probably would have been overlooked if he wasn't in the feud. 
Yeah, I think so. I think it's really add to it. It's good to have the Miz in there just to mix things up. Um, in terms of Jericho, though, I actually like what they're doing with him. I think this is the best he's been booked for a long time now since he come back. And I like the fact that he is kind of more the heel now because he attacked AJ after a tag team match on SmackDown, hit him with a code breaker. And that was kind of what led into the match with Styles later in the night where Jericho actually picked up the win. So it, it was cool to see that they didn't just have a clean win. It was kind of dirty tactics going into it, and we did get heel Jericho. Although, if you actually watch Raw, it didn't seem that way, because the crowd were more behind Jericho than the worst <laughs> styles. And I think that's kind of a case of like how this booking's gone. It's, it's like age is not entirely over. So I think by the time we get this match, and it does come round, I think it's going to really turn the tide. And I think this will be the time where AJ does get that chance to show what he can do in the ring. And I think we've seen it at Beast at least as well um, when Jericho took on Kevin Owens. And I think he really took it to the next level and he just showed mm. people that he still can go. I think this is going to be the opportunity where him and Styles, being the third match that they've had, they're both really going to go for it on pay-per-view. And it's probably the best chance that Styles has had since the Rumble to actually make an impact and show you know, just how phenomenal he actually is. Yeah, I definitely agree. I don't think he's had that moment to shine, like messing around with people like Miz, Social Outcast and whatnot. And I think having that match standalone, there's like going to be no other mess because it's not Raw, SmackDown, and it's literally going to be those two. I, I definitely think we're going to be in for a hell of a match. And I'm interested to see how Jericho ends up at the end of the match because as far as we know, it doesn't look like there's going to be an awful lot for Jericho after this match. Yeah, it will be a strange one. We've kind of predicted that AJ will go on to Kevin Owens, but it mm -hmm. leaves Jericho in an odd position because you don't know what he's going to do then leading into WrestleMania. Um, I don't know. That That's a good question. I think people should let me know in the comments what they really think Jericho could go on to next and if they think you know, AJ Styles and Kevin Owens is the way to go with this because The Miz is kind of left out in the open as well. Yeah, I think, I think we'll easily see The Miz maybe brought back in again, but... It's strange because like, I know we said for Royal Rumble that I wasn't like a huge fan of Jericho coming back all the time and whatnot, but I'd probably say this is probably one of his best comebacks like when he's worked with another talent, whether or not it's because like the missing people are involved, I don't know, but I, I definitely think it feels a lot more polished to what we've had in the past. Yeah, it, it definitely does. It's not just him coming over and putting over any random person, like a Fandango that hasn't even debuted. <laughs> So it's cool that it's actually AJ Styles and it's someone that is, you know, world renowned. And it's not just some new guy that's coming through and he's kind of taken that loss for them. So I'm totally for that. I think it's the best book that Jericho's had. Um, are we going to agree on this one as well? AJ Styles to win? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So we're all on the same page tonight. This, this is going <laughs> pretty well. So that takes us into the second Divas match of the night. We've got the Divas Championship on the line. It's Charlotte with Ric Flair in her corner. She defends the title against Brie Bella. Who's looking to get one more championship reign? Is it gonna is it gonna happen before she walks away? I'm like really super torn on this one because I do love Charlotte. I like what she's done with like with her dad coming in and things and her being Dave's champion, but I don't know this whole entire week I've kind of switched sides and like I'm really kind of rooting for Brie now. I don't know if it's because of Daniel Bryan or the fact that we know she's gonna be leaving come the summer and I, I Personally, I like Brie. I think she's the better of the Bella Twins. And I think now that she's back in that first role and she's got the yes movement behind her, I can like really root for her. But at the same time, I really love Charlotte. And I think we can all gather that it's going to be Charlotte versus Becky versus Sasha. But at the same time, like that alone, that, that triple threat, I would be happy if it wasn't for the title. And it was about WrestleMania breaking rights. So, like, I really don't know. I'm, like, super duper torn. I, I kind of feel what you're going through, yeah, because the Daniel Bryan thing, ever since then, and Brie coming into this, I kind of do want to see her win it. I don't know if it is because of Daniel Bryan or not, but at the same mm. time, I like Charlotte, and I like what they're doing with her with Ric Flair. I think that's going really well. I don't see her dropping the title, though, even, especially now that Brie's actually come out and said that she is going to be leaving. But at the same time, I kind of think... Are they going to give her this championship just to, you know, give her a good send off so she can then go and be with Daniel Bryan? It, it's it's a weird one. I wouldn't put that past them, but at the same time, if Brie wins, it then kind of puts the Divas division and the plans going forward up in the air. Because I think you mentioned it. I've I've mentioned it before. 
everyone's kind of set on this idea of the triple threat match between mm. Becky, Sasha, and Charlotte at WrestleMania. And if Brie wins, I don't know how she kind of fits into that. Yeah, it's a really strange one. It, it, it's it's kind of interesting, though, because I think regardless of the outcome of whoever wins, I definitely think we're going to have two matches going into WrestleMania. I think we're going to have that triple threat and then everyone else. And I really don't know because, like, just that, like you said, just that triple threat on its own at WrestleMania being about having a win at WrestleMania. I'd be sold on that. I wouldn't mind at all. But it's kind of like if Charlotte's going to lose at WrestleMania, then it. I kind of feel that it wouldn't matter too much if, he, if she lost at Fastlane. I don't know. It, it's a hard one. I think this is one of the harder ones to predict. Although in my head, like, sense-wise, I'm like, it, it's got to be Charlotte. It's got to be. But I don't think there's part of us that says... You know, maybe Brie has got a chance and they will do it just because of the Daniel Bryan stuff. Um, I, I think I'm probably going to go with my head on this one and say Charlotte. Yeah, it's definitely between my head and my heart. My head definitely says Charlotte and Charlotte should continue because she's been doing a brilliant job and no one can argue that she's become a brilliant heel. But then my heart's like the yes movement. It kind of reminds me of uh, Brie versus Stephanie, like how she had the whole crowd behind her and... Mm. I, I'm kind of tempted to go with my heart and like risk it, but I think I'm going to have to go with Charlotte. I, I think it's the safe choice on this one. Mm. I'll, I'll put a different um, idea towards you, though. What if Brie was to win this and Charlotte was to take out Brie the same way that she claims to have taken out Nikki? So it puts Brie on the shelf and that gives her the time off. Vacate a championship. Could we then see Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, maybe even Paige come in for the title at WrestleMania? It's a strange one. The only other scenario I wouldn't mind is if Brie won the match, but she didn't win the title. Like, Charlotte uses some dirty tactics, knowing that Brie's not going to be around for much longer and kind of cost her that title, knowing that, obviously, she's not going to chase her for so long because she's leaving. I, I don't think I'd mind something like that. Yeah, that could work as well. I'll ask you for another prediction here. We're going to get a kiss from Ric Flair. <laughs> I have to say, I'm really loving Ric Flair and that whole kicking Alicia Fox, even though it's like celebrate Black History Month, and he's just like amazing. I, I know like a lot of people are complaining that he's there in the first place, but I think he's gold. I, I, I definitely think him in Charlotte's Corner is hilarious. He'll probably kiss someone. Hopefully, Brittany doesn't have to suffer that <laughs> though. It, it could be like his gimmick, dirty old man gimmick. <laughs> that, that's, that's probably what he's going for now. I, I, I don't think that's just a gimmick. I think that's probably Ric Flair in general. <laughs> it's a bit more true to life, isn't it? <laughs> so I, I think we're in agreement on everything here. We've got Charlotte down for this one. We, we've kind of got through these pretty fast. Went to the main event now, and it's strange because it's not actually for the WWE Championship. Instead, we've got a number one contender's triple threat match. So we've got Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Brock Lesnar all fighting to see who goes on to face Triple H at WrestleMania for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I've got to say, before we even get into this, like I said before, I'm convinced, I'm absolutely convinced that Bray Wyatt's going to be in this. He's going to take out Brock Lesnar and that's going to leave this between Reigns and Ambrose. I can't see it going any other way. I, I don't see Lesnar win this because I don't think we'll get another match between Triple H and Lesnar and everything that they've built up between Reigns and Triple H... Why, why would you, like, throw that all away and not have the match at WrestleMania? It's 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 got to be Roman Reigns. <laughs> I think I'll probably get, like, a lot of hate is saying it, but, like, I said it last week. Like, I still kind of feel like Dean Ambrose doesn't belong, like, in there. I'm not saying he's weak and that he's crap and things. It just feels also, like, kind of rushed because of he got that spot from uh, the Royal Rumble and he still had the Intercontinental Championship and he's lost that now and that. He's st I don't know, like... I can't picture him in the main event. It's kind of like that um, being plus player thing that they had. In. I really do not. I think for me, I'd rather have it Roman Reigns versus Brock. But mm. so I, I definitely, but I definitely think we're going to see the Whites interfere, and we're going to see a bit more of that conflict that we had in SmackDown between Roman and Dean Ambrose. And I think having the Whites come in, you don't necessarily need to turn one of them heel, which I think a lot of us predicted might happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I definitely say coming down to Reigns and Ambrose. I, I just hope it's different to what we've seen on Raw, where Ambrose goes to hit him with dirty deeds. 
he lets him out and he's like ah, i could have got you and rains just <laughs> he stands there and he smiles away and it's like how are Rains? You're supposed to be a badass. What are you doing? He's like, he's so happy and smiling. He's like, ah, nice joke, Dean. It, it was so, it's so stupid to say. It's not what I want to say from Roman Reigns. Like, he sh- as soon as Ambrose turned his back, he should have hit him with a Superman punch and he didn't yeah. do it. And it was just so wasted. And I think when it comes around to this, if one of these two wins it and they end up just hugging it out afterwards, shaking hands, I'm going to be so annoyed. I'm going to complain on the internet. I'm going to go all keyboard warrior and keyboard warrior it up because it just, it cannot happen again. I think one of these really has to, you know, lose and then be a bad loser about it and take it out another one. Mm. And I've put together like a little video that I'll be putting up today as well. And that kind of, kind of goes down that route. So the Wyatt's take out Lesnar, but then we get Roman and Dean Ambrose. So Ambrose picks up the pieces, pins Reigns after Lesnar had F5'd him. Um, and then offers the handshake, but Reigns turns it down and hits him with a spear. So I kind of want to see that actually happening fastly, and I think that's so much better. And it kind of puts Dean Ambrose in the main event, but I'm sure Roman Reigns will somehow get in there. Or if Reigns wins, I think Ambrose will somehow get in there. Even if it's like some weird kind of special guest referee, and there's going to be that, you know, the potential twist that one of them could join the authority and cost Reigns the title or cost Ambrose the title. It's got to be something. It can't just be as straightforward as Reigns wins this and then faces Triple H, wins the belt at WrestleMania because I'm going to cry. <laughs> See, like, I'm totally the opposite. I think I think it kind of needs to be a bit more clean cut. I think if you add too many elements, it's going to take away from the fact that Roman's going against Triple H, the CEO, and I kind of feel in this situation that less is more i think if you've got that tension between um dean ambrose and roman reigns you're kind of gonna have to focus on that going into wrestlemania and i don't know it's a strange one i i definitely think i think if the whites are going to get involved that's going to kind of dominate what's going to happen leaving fast lane i think if the dawn then i don't know it's a strange one because i think we all realize that roman reigns probably is going to go on to face triple h mm-hmm. and Brock's going to go on to face the Wyatts, but I think Dean Ambrose is like the strange one because we literally don't know where he can go, so I, th- I think there's a strong possibility that one of them could turn heel, but I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, it, it's one of them weird ones because I want it to happen so much, but I'm kind of under the impression that it is going to be quite clear cut and we're probably just going to get Reigns win it. The only thing that kind of makes us think different is the tease that the Royal Rumble, that was going to be clear cut, and Reigns was going to come back and actually win it, and they went a different way. So it gives us hope they might twist things and do it a little bit different, but if I go with my head again, I think I'm going to go Roman Reigns. (laughs) I think for me as well, for all I'm not a huge Roman Reigns fan, I think I could probably get a bit more excited with Roman against Triple H because you kind of automatically think, oh, Roman did win, but at the same time, it's Triple H, whereas I think if it was Dean Ambrose versus Triple H, I, I, I kind of don't get that initial buzz from it, so I think I have to go with Roman Reigns. Yeah, I, t- I totally agree, because Ambrose and Triple H, it's like there's nothing really there between them. Like, mm-hmm. if Roman Reigns wins it, then, you know, there is everything that's been built up over the last year or so, so it makes sense to have that culminate at WrestleMania, and then to start afresh after that. Even if Brock Lesnar wins, there's the history there with Triple H, but with Dean Ambrose, there's not really a lot there. Yeah, I, I kind of think that Dean Ambrose is in that position that Roman was in last year and he's still got a little bit to, I think, definitely come this time next year. I definitely think he probably will be in the main event, but for me personally, he still needs to grow and kind of get that momentum that Roman's had over the past year. Yeah, I totally agree. So. We're in agreement for everything. We're both going you've, Roman Reigns. See, you've only done that because I was victorious at Royal Rumble, so... I, I'm pretty sure I'll <laughs> give out some of my predictions first. Like, like I say, though, this does seem quite predictable. Do you not think? I just, I, I, I'd i say probably the only one that isn't so much is probably Charlotte versus we, but that's me taking into account things. But I think definitely the rest of them, there's definitely a lot of predictability. Yeah, I definitely think so. I think... Last month at the Royal Rumble, there were matches I could go either way. I think this one, it's a lot more clear-cut. Yeah, definitely. And 
that's probably why we aren't excited. There's no doubt about that. Some of them, like Kalisto versus Del Rio, watching the match, they will be amazing and things. But looking at it on the card, it, it isn't anything really to get excited over. And like I said, to me, it feels like a glorified Raw. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think these matches are standouts, like your Kevin Owens, Ziggler, great match. Mm. Not too interesting. AJ Styles, Chris Jericho should be an awesome match, but there's nothing really on the line. So I guess for that reason, that probably is why I'm not as looking forward to this. But, you know, WrestleMania is not too far away, and that's always an awesome event. So we can just look forward to that. We can get fast lane out of the way, and then we're on the road to WrestleMania. Yeah, definitely. I definitely think the raw after Fastlane, that's going to be when you're going to see the momentum shift and everything start to come into play. And I definitely think the raw after Fastlane will be definitely worth tuning in because I dare say we're going to get a few things happen at Fastlane that will affect the course of WrestleMania and things. Yeah, it, it should be unmissable raw this week. Hopefully, after last week and Strowman and Big Show main event, like, it can't <laughs> get any worse. So. Uh, I say definitely check our own next week. That's going to be awesome. Um, I guess that covers our predictions and for fast lane. But make sure to get involved. Let us know your predictions for the show in the comments, or you can submit your predictions over at smacktalks.org forward slash predictions. Ellen, is there anything you'd like to promote before we take the fast lane to fast lane? <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah, next week I do have um, a special inspired ties special where it's going to be potential potential Hall of Fame Divas that I'd want to see in the Hall of Fame. So if you're a fan of the Divas and you do like Hall of Fame, definitely check that out. I've also got my Divas Cream Mod, which a few people seem to be liking. It's different. And I think, if I'm not wrong, we're coming to the end of my future Tyler Reese at Arrival and things, and then Kevin on. So that's definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of either of those. And then we've got last year's simulation of Fastlane. So I've got a mix of content. It sounds awesome. Definitely check that out. Divas Career Mode has been awesome. I've definitely been checking that out. Um, and I, I haven't really got into Career Mode playing it, but it's been awesome actually just sit and watch it because you can actually enjoy it and appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. And I'm loving things like where there was like a, a pay-per-view package and things made for my feud with Tyler Breeze. You've got things like Renee and like my character having the manly voice and things, <laughs> which it, it's all just a laugh. And I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more than last year. So definitely check it out i have to say i always forget about the interviews so whenever i'm watching it <laughs> it totally takes us by surprise every single time <laughs> and like like my character and like my new gimmick is being absolutely awful to renee young and yet she just smiles and shrugs it off she, she's going roman reigns that, that's <laughs> the Rim, roman reigns gimmick so, so that sounds pretty cool guys definitely check that out um as for the smack talks channel i've put up simulation like i mentioned earlier so we've got fast lane's main event with the wyatt's getting involved um we've got this week in wrestling covering the week's wrestling news some news on wwe 2k 16 coming out for pc and there's also dlc out next week um aside from that over on our joint channel on regeneration x i've been playing through life is strange which i have to say is an absolutely amazing game i can't believe it's took us this long to play it <laughs> Because if I knew it was so good and it had so many cool elements like heavy rain, heroes, time travel, there's so much in there. Like, I'm really enjoying that. So if you want to check that out, that's up on Regeneration X. Elle's also been playing through Minecraft Story Mode. How's that going? It's it's not too bad. It's it's a little childish, but it's definitely definitely worth checking out. And if if you are into like Telltale games and things, it's a brilliant one to play yourself. Absolutely, the Telltale games are awesome. I th you mentioned the Walking Dead's coming up as well. Yeah, so I'm going to be playing, I think that's from like next week, so if you are a fan of Walking Dead and specifically Michonne, which it's about, I'd definitely check it out because by the looks of it, it's going to be one hell of a story. It should be awesome. We've got Walking Dead back as well, so it should be awesome just to check that and see how it goes because it is different to the TV show, so it's well worth checking out. We'll leave links to everything in the video description just in case you want to check out any of this, um, but I guess that is it for this Fastlane Predictions. All that's left to be said is have a great